Today we'll look at some more results regarding series and uh, look at when certain series converge and what are the specific properties of convergent series that we can extend to other series um, related to this series. Okay, so uh, let's we'll start with theorem 3.41, which says. Um, if you have two sequences given two sequences a k um, well a n b n why am I using a a k a n b n put a n is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to n a k. So I'm calling a n, capital A n, as basically s n. Okay? If n is greater than or equal to 0, and put a minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay? Very specific reason for this, uh, so that we can write everything in one formula rather than having to write two separate formulas. Then, if 0 is smaller than or equal to p, smaller than or equal to q, we have <coughs> <coughs> summation a n b n and is equal to p to q is equal to summation n is equal to p to q minus 1 a n times b n minus b n plus one plus a q b q minus a p minus one b p. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You might want to say, okay, um, what can I say about the series a n times b n, right? So, in general, there are very limited things you can say about this, right? Um, this is not going to be just directly the product. This is going to be something slightly different. And so, this is the first step we are taking towards learning when summation a and b n converges. Proof? Well, summation n is equal to p to q. a n b... oops... A n b n is equal to summation n is equal to p to q. <coughs> well, small a n is in that case just a n minus a n minus 1 times b n. If I expand it out, I get this as summation n is equal to p to q a n b n minus summation n is equal to p minus 1 to q a n minus 1 b n, okay? And now you're just rearranging, rearrange the indices, indices to um, get the sum. Okay, so basically on the other side, if you split it up from n is equal to, oh, sorry, this should be q minus 1. And yeah, that sum is true. So if I split it up, uh, if I split up this as n is equal to p to q minus 1, and the other sum again as p to q minus 1, and club things... <coughs> Is that right? Ah, okay. That's what I did wrong. So this is going to be P to Q again. And then the re... Not rearrange. 
maybe the correct word is rename the indices indices so <coughs> rename the indices to get the sum because then I can just change the second sum as a n b n plus one from n is equal to p minus one to q minus one and that will clearly give me the required summation okay so this is called the partial summation formula this is called the partial summation formula formula and we are going to be using it to look at the series uh, summation a and b n now as i mentioned before in general it's hard to talk about the sum of the series summation a and b n uh, that's because even if a n and b n individually do not converge a and b n might converge uh, for example, if a n was 1 over n, b n was 1 over n, then this is, both of them are divergent, but their product is 1 over n squared, which we have seen is convergent. So, theorem 3.42. Suppose the following things do hold true. <coughs> the partial sums. Sums. A n of summation A n form a bounded sequence <coughs> okay not necessarily convergent but just bounded second b zero is smaller than or equal to b one is smaller than or equal to b two greater than or equal to so it's a monotonically decreasing sequence speed naught and c limit n goes to infinity b n is equal to zero in that case then summation a n b n converges proof so even though we can't talk about the general convergence of a and b n for any random series a n and random series b n where the properties are not really known um in these special circumstances we can talk about it so proof <coughs> choose m such that a n is smaller than or equal to m for every n okay so because my sequence is bounded such an m exists okay given epsilon greater than zero um there exists an n such that there exists an n such that uh, b n is smaller than or equal to well let me just say b n is smaller than or equal to epsilon over 2 m for every n greater than or equal to m right this is true because my sequence is decreasing okay then for n smaller than p smaller than q or smaller than or equal to we have absolute value of summation a and b n from p to q n is equal to p to q is equal to summation n is equal to p to q minus 1 of a n b n minus b n plus 1 plus a q b q minus a q minus one a p minus one 
Et qui m'a un soin BP. BP. Right, by the previous tier. And this is smaller than or equal to M times summation N is equal to P to Q minus 1. Well, AN is smaller than or equal to M. So I have pulled out the M from all of these terms. So I get BN minus BN plus 1 plus BQ minus BP. Okay. <coughs> Which is equal to two MBP smaller than or equal to two MBN, which is smaller than or equal to epsilon. Well now this is the Cauchy criteria satisfies. Cauchy criteria, right? And therefore convergent. Therefore convergent. Um, we have no idea if um, the series, um, what the series converges to, okay? But all we can say is that it's convergent. Especially because, well, we don't know if um, what summation BN converges to and AN converges to. If we have no idea about the convergence of AN and BN, we cannot talk about the convergence of AN, BN. Okay? The value of convergence of AN, BN. Now, <laughs> technically, this is something that is slightly, um, in a way, not absolutely intuitive, okay? Because I am saying that, oh, uh, I have a p minus 1 and a q, and all of them, while they are smaller than or equal to m, there's addition and subtraction, right? However, this can be done only because <coughs> uh, uh, let me just point this out again. Can be done as B n is greater than or equal to B n plus 1 for every n. Okay, because this is a decreasing sequence, um, each of these terms is positive, right? And that is why I can say, oh, um, you are smaller than or equal to m times this, you are smaller than or equal to m times this, and I can pull out. There is still a small matter of a p minus 1 and a q, okay? Um, the fact that... Um, I'm pulling out stuff there, okay? But it works out. Theorem three point four three. Suppose the following things are true. A. Absolute value of C n C1 is greater than or equal to absolute value of C2. Dot dot dot. Well, sure. Let me write down. Absolute value of C3 is greater than or equal. So in terms of their absolute values, it's a decreasing sequence. Second, C of 2m minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. C 2m is smaller than or equal to 0. Okay. So their signs are alternating. And C 
limit n goes to infinity c n is equal to zero okay then i can say then summation c n converges okay uh, let me just make a quick note <coughs> if b is reversed first summation negative c n converges by this theorem this theorem hence summation c n converges okay so while we are saying that oh the odd terms are positive even terms are negative even if the condition was reversed the theorem still holds okay and this is called the alternating series test alternating series test okay now note in this one I need my C and C I to be real numbers so that I can define positive and negative. <coughs> In this one, while I need my B not B I to be real numbers, I am no uh, not making any such assumption on A I. The A I are allowed to be perfectly fine complex numbers. Okay. However. The fact that this is a bounded sequence, summation AI is bounded, does in fact put some bounds on what my AIs are. Okay? Because bounded, the condition of bounded implies that summation AN is a real number. Right? And because summation AN is a real number for every N. It actually means small ans are also real numbers. So both of these theorems, even though in the first theorem we are not explicitly asking for ans to be real, actually are only true for completely real sequences. Okay, theorem three point three three on the other hand, this is true even for two completely. Uh, three point four one on the other hand is uh, true even for completely complex sequences. 3.42 and 3.43 re require real sequences. Okay. Yeah. Well, the proof is going to be extremely easy. We are going to use theorem for a 3.42. Use term 3.42 with a n is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1 and b n is equal to absolute value of c n. Okay? Term. Three point four four. Suppose the radius of convergence of suppose the radius of convergence convergence of summation C and Z to the N where C N and Z N are complex numbers is one. Okay. And suppose C0 is smaller than or equal to C1, smaller than or equal to C2, smaller than or equal to dot dot dot. Which implies that while Z is allowed to be a complex number, CI have to be real numbers. So they're decreasing. And limit n goes to infinity, CN is equal to 0. Okay. Then summation c n z to the n converges 
converges at every point on the circle at every point on the circle solute formula of z is equal to one except possibly at z is equal to one okay so this theorem is strengthening what we talked about in power series in power series we saw that the radius of convergence uh, if you are less than the radius of convergence, you're always going to converge. If you're more than the radius of convergence, you're always going to diverge. On the circle of the radius of convergence, we do not know what happens. Here we are saying, if certain conditions are satisfied, then life is better. I can say that oh, my series converges even at radius equal to 1, or radi at the radius, as long as um, z is not equal to 1. I can guarantee that it converges for z not equal to 1. Um, for z equal to 1, there might be some issues. Okay? Proof. Put in... <coughs> z equal to z to the n, b n z equal to c n. Then the hypothesis of theorem, then by theorem 3.42, uh, we get that absolute value of a n is equal to summation m is equal to 0 to n, z to the m. Well, this is equal to 1 minus z to the n plus 1 over 1 minus z, which is smaller than or equal to 2 over absolute value of 1 minus z, right? And hence it is bounded as long as z is not equal to 1. If z is equal to 1, absolute value of z is equal to 1 and it is not equal to 1 uh, and the number is not equal to 1. So for every single a n, the summation a n, uh, uh, sorry, the value of capital a n, which is summation from 0 to n, is bounded by 2 over 1 minus z, except in the case z is equal to 1. Okay? And so we can use the previous theorems on this. Okay, now let us define the concept of um, absolute convergence. Definition. A series, the series summation a n is said to converge absolutely <coughs> Converge absolutely <coughs> uh, this is more than just an English word saying oh it absolutely converges no 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 um, this means that even if you take the absolute value it converges calm down stop shaking if the series summation a n converges okay theorem um 3.45 super easy one if summation a n converges summation and converges absolutely absolutely 
one. Then summation A and converges. Then summation A N converges. Okay. Proof is really easy. It's uh, by either you can just use comparison to test or um, the inequality that um, absolute value k is equal to n to m a k is smaller than or equal to summation k is equal to n to m of a k right and now um use the cauchy criteria for convergence of summation a uh, summation absolute value of a k okay use cauchy for both if the right hand side is smaller than or equal to epsilon by uh, Cauchy criteria, so is the left hand side. Okay. <coughs> now, um, note. The root test as well as um, ratio tests are t uh, really a test for absolute convergence. The root test and ratio test are tests for um. So let me just say, not just root rate, the comparison root and ratio tests, tests are tests for absolute convergence. <coughs> And hence, they cannot give you information about uh, non-absolute conversions of tests okay. uh, for a series, right? So if the series does not have uh, constant absolute values, um, then um, so even if the series does not converge absolutely, it might in fact, in fact um, converge non-absolutely, right? Which is to say, um, well, summation absolute value of n does not converge, but n converges. So, so they cannot give any information. Information for non-absolute convergence. Okay. So, <coughs> unlike multiplication, however, addition of series is behaves pretty nicely. So, term 3.47, if summation a n is equal to a and Summation Bn is equal to B, 
then summation a n plus b n is equal to a plus b and summation c times a n is equal to c times a for any fixed c fixed c well proof well technically these are really easy let a n is equal to summation n is equal to zero to infinity oops m is equal to zero to n of a m b n is equal to summation m is equal to zero to n of b m then a n plus b n is equal to summation m is equal to zero to n of a m plus b n right now what happens what is the limit of a n then as as limit a n limit n goes to infinity of a n is equal to a limit n goes to infinity of b n is equal to b we have we get limit n goes to infinity of a n plus b n is equal to a plus b hence the left hand side follows okay and for the right hand side uh, sorry we have a plus b for the second part i have um c times a n is equal to summation m is equal to zero to n c times a n <sighs> therefore limit n goes to infinity summation m is equal to zero to n c times a n is equal to limit n goes to infinity c times a n is equal to c times a stop moving please okay so addition behaves very very nicely for convergent series this um the product series is always an issue. Products are not nice, okay? But, um, especially because they're infinite sums, their products are product of sums, you have distribution property happening. But um, there is something called a product series which behaves decently nicely. Definition given summation an and summation bn we put cn is equal to summation m is equal to zero to n a m b n minus m okay <clears throat> And we call then summation c n is called the product of the two series of the two series. Okay, and uh, the definition makes intuitive sense because. Um, if you look at, um, um, this definition makes sense as if a n is equal to summation 
m is equal to 0 to n, the n, bn is equal to summation, m is equal to 0 to n, bm, cn is equal to m is equal to 0 to n, cm, then we do get that cn is equal to a n b n, right? The product of the two summations where distribution happens, uh, this is what you're going to get, okay? <coughs> Similarly, if, um, if these were power series, if uh, we take power series summation a n z to the n summation b n z to the n then uh, by collecting by collecting terms of uh, <clears throat> same power of z, same power of z, we, in the multiplication, in the multiplication, we get Summation a and b n. Oops. Summation b n z to the n is equal to summation c n z to the n. Okay. Now, the, the nice theorem that we have. Theorem. 3.50 is a bit restrictive in terms of how we can take the product. Okay? Suppose A summation n is equal to 0 to infinity A n converges absolutely Okay. B summation n is equal to zero to infinity n is equal to a. C summation n is equal to zero to infinity b n is equal to b. Then D letting cn is equal to summation m is equal to 0 to n a m b to the n minus m uh, then summation n is equal to 0 to infinity cn is equal to b times b okay which is to say as long as one of the series is converges absolutely and the other one converges, uh, we can say, we can guarantee to say that the series is convergent, absolutely convergent. So, i.e., the product of two convergent series as converges converges as long as okay maybe not as long as if uh, one of the two if at least one of the two series is converges absolutely. If at 
biggest fun of the YouTube series coming for just absolutely <coughs> okay oof This is a slightly more involved proof than all the proofs before, which were, let's be honest, none of them actually were a challenge. Right? So, put an is equal to summation, k is equal to zero to n, a n, a k, small a k, b n is equal to summation, k is equal to zero to and bk cn is equal to summation k is equal to zero to n ck and um, i'm going to introduce a new notation beta n is equal to bn minus b okay so not much of a trouble just um something slightly more okay then we get that <coughs> cn is equal to a0 b0 plus a0 b1 plus b1 b0 a1 plus dot 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 a0 bn plus a1 bn minus 1 plus dot 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 a a n B zero. A N B zero. Right? That's the product. Which is equal to well if I co collect all the terms of coefficient A zero, I get this is A zero B N plus A one B N minus one plus dot 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 A N B zero. Well, <coughs> I can write these as a0 of b plus beta n plus a1 of b plus beta n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a n of b plus beta 0. And, uh, well, what that gives me is I can add up everything now as a0b plus a1b plus a2b. So I can combine all the terms with b, and I get that is exactly a n of b plus, oh, a0 beta n plus a1 beta n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a n beta 0. Right? <coughs> so now, um, this is another product sum in a way, right? And so I'm calling this as gamma n. Okay? Well, what is our goal? We want to show that CN converges to AB. We want to show CN converges to AB. Um, now, as ANB converges to AB, that suffices to show it suffices to show show limit n goes to infinity of gamma n is equal to zero right if gamma n goes to zero that means um this product a n b is the same as the limit of c i've used beta and alpha uh, beta and gamma let me use alpha but alpha is equal to summation 
n is equal to 0 to infinity absolute value of a n. I know my series a n converges absolutely. I didn't have, I didn't give the value a name. So I am just saying that, okay, let me say that it converges absolutely to a. Okay. Well, because it converges absolutely, uh, given epsilon greater than zero, uh, by C, because um, beta b, uh, given epsilon greater than zero, um, we can choose, we can choose, well, let me just say, there exists n, there exists n such that beta n beta n why can't I write the proper n beta n is smaller than or equal to epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n okay as beta n goes to zero by b by c Well, therefore, absolute value of gamma n is smaller than or equal to beta naught a n plus dot 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 beta n a n minus n plus beta n plus one a n minus n plus one plus dot 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 beta n a zero. Okay, I'm just splitting it into two terms, which is smaller than or equal to, well, the first terms I don't really know about for a n plus dot 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 plus beta n a n minus n. But for the other terms, every single beta term in here is smaller than or equal to epsilon. So this is smaller than or equal to epsilon times a because the sum from a naught to a n plus one is smaller than or equal to um, alpha. So sorry, not a, alpha. Okay, great. Now we keep n fixed. N fixed. And letting and letting small n go to infinity. We get Limit supremum n goes to infinity of gamma n is smaller than or equal to epsilon alpha. Okay, so technically, this is slightly uh, hidden. What we would get is the limit sup is smaller than epsilon alpha plus epsilon prime for every single epsilon prime. Because I can bound this to be smaller than or equal to epsilon prime for every epsilon prime as limit a n goes to zero because it's absolutely convergent. These are constants. I can bound this uh, for every epsilon prime. So technically, I'm saying this is smaller than or equal to for every epsilon prime. And so, <laughs> if it's great as smaller than or equal to plus epsilon prime for every epsilon prime greater than zero, it is smaller than this for everything. Okay? Well, but epsilon is arbitrary. But epsilon is 
arbitrary. Therefore, limit n goes to infinity supremum gamma n goes to zero. Okay. Now, um, that completes the theorem. One question that you can ask is the following, that um, suppose I don't know that um, theorem 3.51, I don't know that A, B, and C are absolutely convergent, but I know that their product series converge. Okay, if <coughs> um, some the series summation a n summation b n summation c n converge to a b c and summation sorry and c n is equal to summation m is equal to zero to n a m b n minus m then what can i say even if they're not absolutely convergent can i say that c is equal to a b and the answer is yes then c is in fact equal to a b Okay, uh, we won't prove this right now. Um, the proof requires some um, properties of continuity of prior series, which we will not be doing in this course. But that, uh, but I just wanted to know, let you know that this is in fact true. We, even if we do not assume anything about absolute convergence, if we know things are convergent, they do converge to what you expected to. Okay, I'm going to stop this one here.